Friends, welcome back to Heaven's Gate. I'm Emmanuel, and here we explore mystery and the incredible, bringing to light experiences that challenge our views on life and death. From encounters with the afterlife to visions of what awaits us beyond our time on Earth, every story we share is a journey into the unknown, but also a path to a deeper understanding of our purpose. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of these extraordinary stories. Every testimony we share has the potential to change how we see everyday life, offering us a spiritual perspective that we often forget amid the hustle of reality. The stories you'll hear here aren't just tales, but messages that might make you reflect on what truly awaits us beyond this existence. Today, I'm bringing you a story that might truly change your outlook on the world. It's the account of a mother who lost everything and fought against immense pain, but what she experienced after the tragedy is beyond imaginable. What her son saw and felt while suspended between life and death will leave you breathless. Are you ready to uncover what lies beyond the veil? My name is Jenna, and my story is not easy to tell, but it's necessary, because what happened in my life isn't just my story, it's a testimony of faith, one I can no longer keep to myself. I'm the mother of two sons, Alessio, who is 13, and Christian, who is 7. My journey through pain, loss, and redemption has touched every part of my life, and it has changed how I see the world. Five years ago, I lost my husband, the father of my children, to an overdose. He was a good man, but drugs had destroyed him, and I too was caught in that dark vortex with him. I was using substances, seeking relief in something that, in the end, only showed me how cruel escaping can be. Each dose was a betrayal to myself, to my family. And when he died, I hit rock bottom. It felt like the world had collapsed on top of me. There was no way out. I didn't know how to live without him or the addiction. But my father, a strong and devout man, insisted that I get help. He forced me into a rehabilitation program. And even though I hated him for it at first, today I know he saved me. What I didn't realize was that he wasn't just saving me from a ruined life, but he was guiding me towards a new life, one led by faith in Jesus. I spent a year in rehabilitation, embraced by a community of pastors who not only helped me detox, but also taught me to look within myself, to rediscover the value of life, the value of sacrifice, and the importance of faith. They taught me that despite the pain, there is hope, and that through faith in Jesus, we can find new direction. When I finally returned home, I was changed. I was determined to be the mother my children deserved, to give them a better life, free from the weight of my wrong choices. My parents had taken care of them during my absence, but now that I was back, finally healthy and free from that nightmare, I was ready to dedicate myself completely to them. Yet a part of me still mourned for my husband. The nights were the hardest. I often found myself awake, praying, asking Jesus to forgive him, to welcome him in peace. I prayed that he was happy, and that my unborn child, the little soul I never got to know, was with him. Christian was a lively child, full of energy, and always with a smile on his face. He too loved spending time with his grandfather, my father, who adored him. One of their favorite activities was going to the lake to fish and ride bikes along the shore. That day, like so many others, my father decided to take Christian with him for a peaceful afternoon at the lake. None of us could have imagined what would happen. On the way, their car was involved in a terrible accident with a truck. I still remember the hospital's call, the terror that gripped my heart as I rushed to them. My father had died instantly. Christian was alive, but gravely injured. He had suffered a severe blow to the head and was in a coma. Each day, sitting beside his hospital bed, I felt despair growing. Each day I prayed. All I could cling to was faith, the faith that had saved me from my abyss. Every time I spoke to the doctors, their answers became more pessimistic. The longer he stays in a coma, the less likely he is to wake up without brain damage. But I couldn't accept that. I kept praying, 
asking Jesus to bring my boy back. Weeks passed slowly and painfully. My world had shrunk to that hospital room, to the chair next to Christian's bed. Everything else had ceased to exist. I was there, just me and my prayers. After four weeks and two days, the unthinkable happened. It was dinner time, and as I sat vigil by Christian, as always, I suddenly saw him open his eyes. He seemed to be waking from a deep sleep. I looked at him in disbelief, my heart pounding. He stared at me, his eyes bright but conscious. And then he spoke the words I will never forget. Don't worry, Mom. I know your secret. You can stop suffering now. I froze. What did he mean? What secret? But at that moment, I didn't have the strength to seek answers. The only thing that mattered was that my child was back. Alive. Conscious. It was a miracle. The doctors were stunned, calling it an inexplicable recovery. But I knew what had happened. Jesus had answered my prayers. Christian was discharged after a week. We returned home, and life slowly seemed to resume its normal course. But the true miracle wasn't yet complete. A few days after returning home, while helping Christian with his homework, he looked at me with a serene but intense expression and said, Don't worry, Mom. I know your secret. Now you're not alone. The blood froze in my veins. A chill ran through my body, leaving me speechless. What do you mean, sweetheart? What secret? I asked, trying to stay calm, but deep inside I knew something extraordinary was about to be revealed. I saw Dad and my little sister, the tiny one. We spent time together. You don't need to worry about them anymore. My heart stopped. I had lost a baby during my first pregnancy due to complications, but I had never spoken to Christian about it. He couldn't have known anything about her, yet every detail he described was precise. It was as if he had truly lived those moments with them. He went on to describe the time he spent with them, speaking of his dad with a tenderness that melted my soul. Dad told me he's okay, that he's at peace. We went fishing and rode bikes together, just like we did when he was here. But what he said next hit me even harder. Then Grandpa arrived too, Mom. He cried when he saw Dad, you know. I've never seen Grandpa cry before. They were all so happy. Every word was like a blow to my heart. My father, who had always been strong, had never shown his emotions. And now, through Christian, he was telling me that he too had found a peace I had never seen in him while alive. But the most extraordinary revelation came when Christian spoke of a man he had met in that place. He was tall and kind, Mom. He spoke to me. He told me to tell you something. I leaned in, holding back tears, and asked him, What did he say? Christian, with a calmness I had never seen in him, answered, He told me to tell you that he exists, and to never lose faith until his return. To teach his teachings to us kids, and that thanks to your prayers, Dad and my little sister are at peace. Those words changed my life forever. When I look back, I see a broken woman, lost in the darkness of addiction, without hope or direction. Today that woman is just a shadow of the past. I have risen. I have been rebuilt, not just for myself, but for my children, for my husband, and for my daughter who awaits me in heaven. The miracle we experienced not only changed our daily lives, but completely transformed the way we see and face the world. Before Christian's accident, despite my rehabilitation journey, my faith was fragile. I prayed, yes, but I did so with the constant fear of not being heard, of still being punished for my past mistakes. I still felt guilty for losing my husband, for not being able to save him, for not being the perfect mother to my children during the most difficult times. But through Christian's experience, I understood that God's forgiveness is real, and that my redemption did not depend on my perfection, but on my faith and my open heart. Christian himself has shown a maturity I never expected. At only seven years old, he witnessed something that most people never see in their entire lives. 
Yet he accepted this experience with serenity and a calmness that often surprises me. His faith has grown naturally, like a plant that takes light from the sun and water from the rain. I never forced him to pray or follow religious rituals, but he does it spontaneously. Every now and then, he tells me about dreams in which he sees his father or grandfather, always happy, always at peace, always with a message of love and hope. Moreover, what we have lived through has united us as a family. Alessio, who initially reacted with skepticism to everything that happened, gradually began to see the changes in our lives as well. He understood that Christian's miracle was not just an isolated event, but a tangible sign of something greater. He too has started to find comfort in faith, albeit in a different way from his younger brother. Alessio has always been more rational, more focused on concrete facts, but now I see how he allows himself to be guided by a hope he previously did not have. His disbelief has transformed into an openness to possibilities he once refused to consider. I decided to share our story with our religious community, not only to testify about the miracle we experienced, but also because I believe that what Jesus said to Christian is a message for everyone. We live in difficult times, where faith often wavers under the weight of daily sufferings and the challenges each of us faces. Our story is an invitation not to give up, to believe that even in the deepest darkness, there is always a light ready to guide us. By starting to tell our story, I discovered that many others needed to hear it. Many approached me to share their struggles, their losses, their moments of doubt, and through recounting our experience, I have seen people regain hope, the same hope that I found thanks to divine grace. We have started small prayer groups, moments of reflection where we share our experiences and support each other. The most extraordinary thing is seeing how the message my son received from Jesus is not only for us, but for everyone. Never lose faith until his return. These words have become the center of my life. I know that the path of faith is not always easy. There are still days when the pain of loss is felt, days when I wake up thinking of my husband and miss him terribly. But now I know that he is at peace, that he is with our daughter, and that one day we will all be reunited. And this awareness gives me the strength to keep going. Today, we live with a new perspective. We no longer take anything for granted. Every day is a gift. Every moment spent together as a family is precious. We have learned to slow down, to enjoy the little things, to value what truly matters. We have found a new purpose in our lives, to live according to Jesus' teachings, to be witnesses of His love and grace, and to share His message of hope with anyone willing to listen. Christian is growing up, and every day I learn something new from him. His view of the world is simple, but full of truth. He often reminds me that faith is not complicated, that it is a natural thing, like breathing. He lives it without fear, without hesitation, with the certainty that Jesus is always with us. And it is this certainty that, day after day, continues to guide us as a family. What I have learned over these years is that no matter how insurmountable the pain may seem, there is always hope. Even in the darkest moments when everything seems lost, the light of faith can bring us back. Our story, Christian's Miracle, is living proof of this. And as much as the world may be full of challenges, I now know that we are never truly alone. We will continue to walk with faith in our hearts, knowing that every step is guided by something greater than us. We are a family that has known pain, but also the power of redemption. We are grateful for every day we are granted and live knowing that, thanks to God's grace, times of peace and serenity await us. And now, with an open heart and a serene mind, we can face the future, not with fear, but with hope. We have just gone through an incredible story that showed us how fragile and precious life is, but also how powerful faith and the love that unites us are. The testimony of this mother and her son reminds us that even in the darkest moments, there is a light, a hope that cannot be broken. Sometimes, what happens beyond this life seems impossible to comprehend but it offers us a glimpse into a greater reality where peace, forgiveness, and love prevail. This story is not just a touching tale of pain and miracle, but a profound reflection on what truly matters, the bond with those we love, 
faith in something greater, and the certainty that we are never truly alone. It invites us never to lose hope and to believe that even when everything seems lost, there is always a bigger plan that we cannot yet see. If this story has touched you, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you don't miss the upcoming episodes because we will continue to explore together stories that touch the heart and our souls. Additionally, share this video with your friends, family, and anyone who might draw strength and inspiration from this tale. These stories deserve to be heard because they could change someone's life just as it happened to us today. Thank you for being here with us, and always remember, we are never truly alone. Before concluding, I invite you to visit our new website, where you will find exclusive audiobooks to listen to anytime and anywhere. These audiobooks are designed to enrich your daily life, offering knowledge and support through everyday challenges. We add new titles every day, so I encourage you to stay updated by visiting the site regularly. Also, if you have any ideas or requests for new audiobooks you'd like to hear, let us know. We'll create them just for you. By supporting us, you'll also help us continue our projects to help people. That's why I invite you to subscribe, leave a comment, and if you'd like, purchase an audiobook. You'll find the website link in the description. Thank you in advance for your valuable support.